Hello, I hope everybody's been to the toilet because there's no stopping now until we get to Madrid. Just five days racing left in the Vuelta to go with the one day's talking about it that the riders had to enjoy yesterday in lieu of an actual stage. And since they went to all the trouble of putting on a clean shirt and facing a room full of jaded and unshaven journalists, the least we can do is listen to some of what they had to say. Starting with the race leader and according to some people already pretty much race winner, Joaquin Rodriguez. No, ganador impossible, queda todavía una semana, está clarísimo que que queda mucha vuelta todavía, quedan cuatro días muy importantes para nosotros, tenemos que cuidarnos el mínimo detalle muy importante. Bueno, pues sí, todos los días importantes y hay que intentar eh, aprovecharlos. Y bueno, hasta ahora pues, nosotros cada día pues, plantearemos la táctica que queramos más convenientes. Luego eh, sí que es cierto que Alberto pues eso, está lanzando muchos ataques, pero Purito se está viendo que, que en ningún momento flaquea y se le ve muy entero. Entonces, pues yo lo que hago es eh, ir a mi ritmo, tampoco entro en su, en su juego y, y luego pues ceder el menor tiempo posible en meta con ellos. This has been a, a, a gold mine for me of, of experience. This is uh, never before have I done two grand tours like this back to back uh, with the Olympics in between. It's been hard, hard learning all these lessons, but it's, it's been something that I've, I've really enjoyed and Um, I think I'm going to come away with, with a lot of positives from this race. Y ahora quizá pues el enemigo ya no solamente Alberto y Valverde, sino yo mismo también. Que solamente tienes que hacer eso, no es una cuestión de decir tengo que hacer eso, tengo que arrancarle, tengo que meterle un poquito, tengo que jugármela en esta bajada, no. Es, tengo que aguantar eso, eso y ya está. Mi estado de forma no es el estado de forma que, que he podido tener en otras carreras en las cuales he llegado con un rodaje mayor. Pero bueno, luego también hay que, que reconocer que el estado de forma que tiene Joaquín es impresionante, está fortísimo. La verdad que, que eso es lo que está haciendo todo tan, tan difícil y la verdad que, que hay que felicitarle por el estado de forma que tiene. Bueno, con total normalidad, bueno, el que me está persiguiendo es el a mí. <risa> A toda la plaza mayor es que está seguramente, ya te digo que se habrá visto en circunstancias mucho más difíciles que, que en la que está viendo ahora y, y él seguramente que tendrá su última carta y, y que vuelva a repetir. Que, oye. Queda una oportunidad, una oportunidad gorda que es importante, que es la bola del mundo, pero tal y como está, creo que de momento Alberto lo tiene difícil. I think if, if I do end up with fourth, I'm, I'm going to be very happy with that. I've showed I have the potential to be up there in the contention, so it's, it's, it's just a wealth of knowledge for me. Yo desde luego que, que sí, que encantado si hay viento y encantado si hay lluvia y factores los cuales podamos eh, aprovecharlos y usarlos de, de aliado. Al final lo que hemos venido es para luchar por la victoria, intentar eh, conseguirla y lo que tenga que venir que venga. Now, here's how the race stands going into the final five days. Joaquin Rodriguez has a lead of 28 seconds over Alberto Contador. Alejandro Valverde is two minutes four down in third with Chris Froome fourth at four minutes 52. Rodriguez's teammate Danny Moreno is fifth, Robert Hazink sixth, Andrew Talansky seventh, and Hazink's teammate Lawrence Ten Dam is eighth. Nicholas Roach, by the way, is just off the leaderboard in tenth. Now, God forbid the riders should have a flat stage to start the run into Madrid. Stage 17 runs 187 kilometers from Santander to Fuente de, with two mountains en route and a 1,000 meter climb up to the finish. So yet another uphill finish on the Vuelta. It's not exactly the Astoria Mountains, Roger, that we saw at the weekend, but Alberto Contador can't be juicy, can he? He's got to try and take whatever chances he's got that remain in this race. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, that's the question he has to keep on asking Joaquin Rodriguez. You know, how long can you hold this scintillating form? You know, everybody always talks about the last week of a Grand Tour where the cracks appear with even the best riders. So, you know, Alberto Contador, I think he's getting, he, well, he has to be getting desperate now. He's got today and Saturday's uh, finish up to Bola del Mondo. But, you know, normally on paper today probably wouldn't have been a stage that he would have singled out just because of the severity of the climbs not really being right up there, especially after the last few days. But, you know, he, he's got to continue trying. I mean, to not try something today, to not give it a go is just giving up the Vuelta. I think he should try something. 
And as far as Rodriguez is concerned, I mean, it's very unlikely that he would become complacent with the Bola del Mundo waiting on Saturday. But he's also lost a Grand Tour this year on the very final day, the Giro to Ryder Hegedal. So no chances of him thinking that he's got it in the bag. No, that's it. And he's ridden a scintillating race till now, you know, both with the legs and tactically. So I don't see him losing concentration. And, and today is one of those dangerous days. You know, it's, it's not really a, it's not a flat stage by any means, but it's also not a super hard mountain day. So it could be a day you'd lose concentration, but I really don't think so. I think, you know, that, that smarting from losing the Giro on the last day will still be very, very well apparent in his mind at the moment. He'll be, he'll be just following Contador till Madrid on Sunday. And with the podium uh, occupant set, even if we don't know the final order, um, Chris Froome is, as he's saying, riding for experience, being a leader in a Grand Tour, knowing that he's going to finish fourth pretty much whatever happens and storing things up for next year. That's right. I mean, it, it, the way Chris is talking, you know, I also saw some quotes that, you know, he's thinking about the World Time Trial Championships now. So his mind has already gone from this world. He's already thinking about other targets to pick himself up afterwards. But he will go out of this with a massive amount of knowledge. And look at Brad Wiggins. It wasn't his first tour this year that he went for with GC to, and actually went to win. It took him a few grand tours before he could finally piece all the parts together. I mean, I only did it on a very much lower scale of winning, winning a stage race. But the stress that it took to win just a five-day race was absolutely incredible. So yeah, I can only imagine what Chris has had to go through this Volta just to get to where he is now. So he, he should be very proud of the way he's ridden and very proud of the way Team Sky have gone into it. He went in with it with all guns blazing, just didn't quite work out. All right, here we go then. The penultimate uphill finish of this year's Vuelta. Let's see if Alberto Contador can finally sneak some seconds back on Joaquin Rodriguez. Now there is Alberto Contador at the start in Santander and having had no success in this tour waiting until the final climb to attack, he launched an early one today, in fact so early that the TV cameras weren't live. It was on the second climb of the day, the Collar de la Oz, that he rode off the front of the main field towards a large escape group that contained his teammate Sergio Paulinho and two of Alejandro Valverde's Movistar squad. We can only speculate not having seen it, but Rodriguez and his team were not alert to the move and Rodriguez found himself in a chasing group with Valverde coasting along behind him not showing the work and Chris Froome and Robert Hezink further back in the main field. By the time the Spanish coverage began, Contador was on the descent of the climb and had already wiped out half of Joaquin Rodriguez's 28 second lead. So a magnificent move now by Alberto Contador. He's got the rest day out of the way. This is the group of the red jersey of Joaquin Rodriguez and Alejandro Valverde. And we're hearing on race radio that the distance between these two groups is currently standing up 14 seconds with Chris Froome and Robert Hessink round about 1 minute 20 seconds behind, losing a lot of time after the attack of Alberto Contador. Looking down here, we can see the group of Chris Froome and Robert Hessink it has been an inspired attack by Contador to try and win the Vuelta. No, it's a great time to, to go on the attack, just when you least expect it. And uh, Contador looked at today's stage and thought, this second category climb isn't hard enough that he wants to go from a wee bit further out. He put some uh, riders in this uh, front group. There was a 20-odd man group in front uh, before we had this climb. We had the climb at the bottom and everything just went ballistic. Contador went on the attack, went third over the top of the climb. He now has 31 seconds on Rodriguez and uh, Valverde group, which put some virtual leader on the road. Rodriguez has to now think, either he, he looks back and talks to Valverde and says, come on, we have to help. Valverde doesn't have to. If he wants to, to win this Vuelta, he can just say, I'll tell you what, I'm going to sit back. It's all or nothing here. Big pressure. I don't think panic, but big pressure on the red jersey of Rodriguez at the moment. 45 seconds ahead. Alberto Contador is going for glory. He is making a bid to take the red jersey. This welter gets better and better. We've had a rest day yesterday and a lot of people were looking forward to it. And after the uh, the last stage of the welter, everybody's thinking, what a brutal climb. But uh, this is a brutal race and it's going to be a strong winner. Rodriguez still sitting in there. In this group, you have got uh, Alessandro Balan, you've got Cunigo, Astro Loza at the back, the rider from... Um, 
Katusha riding at front there in that second group with two Saxo Bank Tinkle ri ri riders just sitting shotgun behind him. As we look here at the group of Chris Froome with Team Sky looking to bring Froome back into the race. Valverde is now Valverde going to work. It looks like he's decided to go to the front. So Valverde has decided that he is going to do some work as Rodriguez now looks for his team car. Bjarne Reis is giving Contador food all the time, giving him gels, giving him bottles, giving other teams as well <laughs> food and bottles so that they know that they've been looked after. As uh, it's all mind games and it is all teamwork, Brian, and you know exactly what's going on here because they are calling on that, that whole group to work with Contador and to put themselves up on the general classification and all the little things that can happen like you're suffering boys here's a bottle here's a gel they've been done right now you know you need you need allies in this uh, race and you know we've talked about this in other stages before it's all these wee little things that help and Brian Reese just you know gives um, one of the Astana riders, just the uh, uh, Thierry Longo it was, just a bottle. It's like, you know, here we go, we'll try and look after you. And you can just see in the left-hand side that, uh, you know, the uh, the rider there from uh, Movistar, he doesn't want the camera bike sitting in front and helping Sky. Movistar are in a good place at the moment. So Valverde's happy. He knows he's not going to beat Rodriguez and uh, Contador, and he's happy with a podium. That's That looks as if he's, he's going to be good for that but uh, they have got two riders in this front group they are in with a, a chance of a stage win with uh, Quintana especially in there the Colombian just sitting fourth wheel there's so many times in bike racing when you look at a stage and you think it could be the day when this whole race explodes but sometimes and generally it doesn't happen uh, but today it is happening as we race now into the town of Potes and it is Contador who's looking now to try and take this six second time bonus every single second that this man can pick up on the road today can give him the red jersey as he heads now ahead of Tiralongo for the line or oh, Tiralongo is going to go past him Contador's not going to be very happy about this so now the acceleration of Tiralongo as they look for the sprint point which should be just up here Tiralongo on the front for Astana. 118 now is the advantage. That acceleration of Contador is going to hurt. I'm just wondering, here is the sprint point. Here we go. Tiralongo looks across. And uh, Contador takes that six-second time bonus in Potes. Contador takes six seconds. And that is going to help when we get to the finish to try and take this red jersey away from Rodriguez. Inside the final 17 kilometers of racing and still this pursuit continues. But the advantage is one minute and 57 seconds now between Alberto Contador and his group and the chase of Rodriguez. Valverde, Brian, has decided, no, I'm not going to help you at all. And actually, when we get onto the steeper part of this climb, is Valverde going to attack Rodriguez and try and take second place overall? That's the question. 15.8 kilometres to go with just over two minutes now. It's going to be a big ask. You can see Contador's up for it. He's got a great ally here in Tira Longo. And uh, again, back to this group, and it's Lasada solely riding the front of this group after um, some riding from uh, Balan. And I'm afraid to say that, uh, again, no work being done by Rodriguez or Valverde. So, and again, 3.36 back to the, the group of uh, Chris Froome and uh, Hissing. So, again, it's unless Valverde and especially Rodriguez helps Lasada here, I think the Vuelta is slipping away from him. Lasada on the front, followed by Mikel Astaloza, the man who was on the attack a few days ago looking to try and take a stage victory and he was caught. Contador's teammate on the wheel, number 202, Jesus Hernandez, who we've seen do so much work to try and bring the Vuelta a España 
to Alberto Contador. He's just sitting there. He's probably enjoying watching these riders try and bring back his team leader, knowing that as Contador hits 15 kilometers to go with Tiralongo, that this Vuelta Espana looks right now to be heading towards Alberto Contador. It's an incredible day on this stage as he bids now to take this victory. These two riders talking to each other all the time. A fantastic ally, as Brian has said. Tiralongo, a stage winner in the Giro d'Italia this year. We know he's been on form in the mountains already. Alberto Contador still talking all the time. He really has spent all day since he attacked, encouraging either his teammates or his breakaway companion to keep the pace up. Contador, the winner of the Vuelta in 2008. Two stage wins in 2008. Lasada has completely blown. He's shattered. He has nothing left. Yeah, we said this uh, all along. I think we mentioned this in another mountain stage that uh, Rodriguez was on his own in the front group. And uh, really, Katusha have really struggled in it. Again, it's all it's all energy, and uh, Rodriguez is left to to ride as you know why why didn't he ride before when the gap was only less than 30 seconds? I I, I can't get I can't understand that. A gap of 20 30 seconds, you shut it down straight away and help your teammate. Now it's two minutes and he's got two very good riders at the front. Here goes Alejandro Valverde. So Valverde is now going on the attack and looking to leave Rodriguez behind. So there's a lot of action going on now in the second group. Has Rodriguez got it in the legs to go with Valverde? To me, he's cracked. Rodriguez is cracking on this climb now. With 13 kilometers of racing to go, Valverde looks around and the man in the red jersey has finally cracked. Will this answer the question why he didn't ride with Lusada? He couldn't, he never had it, he was on a bad day. And uh, when we were saying about uh, going to the front with Lusada, helping out, shutting it down, he didn't do it because he was um, playing with, uh, you know, with Valverde and maybe some other, trying to get some help because he was under pressure. And uh, he's really under pressure now as he just has to settle down. No teammates round about him, no team. Katusha not strong enough uh, to be there further up the climb, Tira Longo is in trouble now and it looks as if Contador is riding up this climb inside 14 kilometres for the stage and for the red jersey What a race Contador now leaves his breakaway companion on the climb, 13 and a half kilometres to go the state of play Alberto Contador leads. Terralongo is now being dropped. The advantage, last time we heard it, back to the group of Rodriguez was 2 minutes and 22 seconds, but Valverde now has attacked Rodriguez on the climb. And how much time is Rodriguez going to lose? The face of a man who is firmly on the ropes. 2 minutes and 21 seconds is the advantage of Contador on Rodriguez. What of Vuelta Espana this man has had in the red jersey. He's had three stage wins. He's won the leader's jersey since stage four and he's looked invincible. I thought Valverde would maybe wait a wee bit longer, uh, but he didn't. And uh, now Valverde trying to move up the adrenal classification. He did have two riders in front of him. He's now up with one of them who's waited on him, Quintana. And this is what this is what ha happens. You put riders in front, you can ride up to them, and you use your team. What uh, is uh, Rodriguez has got? He's obviously been supreme in the days before the the rest day. Had a bad rest day. It's all caught up with him. He's been feeling bad today. This is when you need a team round about you, and all he's got is Contador's teammate from uh, Saxo Bank Tinkoff. Jesus Hernandez is going to do nothing to help Rodriguez. It is a constant pursuit now between three riders. Alberto Contador, this man in the green jersey, being led by his teammates. What a job they've done for him. Quintana on the front. Interestingly, five kilometres ago, we rode through Quintana. The little town at the bottom of this climb is named after the Colombian or the Colombians named after it, one of the two, but it's quite a notable little village at the bottom of a 
a climb which is proving now to be critical in the Vuelta a España. And uh, the Katusha team thought that this race was pretty much there, but it is proving not to be. Ten kilometers to go, Alberto Contador going for more time, leading Alejandro Valverde by one minute and 46 seconds as Valverde bids to try and go for second place now in this Vuelta a España. The story of the day is Rodriguez in the red jersey who is losing more and more time to Alberto Contador, totally isolated, no teammates left, cracked on the final climb of the day, but the damage was done by Contador on the previous climb and the descent. 1.43 to Valverde, 2.20 to Rodriguez. Contador firmly on his own. He doesn't look to be rocking and rolling at all. He just gets out of the saddle, injects a little bit more pace. Well, he will know the information coming through from uh, Bjorn Reese in the team car. He will know that, uh, where Rodriguez's situation is. He's got 2.28, so when he started today at uh, 28 seconds, he's got two minutes, and uh, he just has to ride steady. I don't think he's too worried about Valverde. Valverde is closing because he has got a teammate with him. When uh, Paulino and Contador were together, they were pushing out time, but now Quintana's gone. Valverde's pretty much on his own, and uh, I don't think this uh, gap will come down much more to uh, Contador in front. Quintana sits up, stretches, uh Hits his thighs a little bit. He's given absolutely everything. His team leader, Valverde, is up here. And he is moving forwards as they go past some of the team buses. Valverde is catching now more riders in front of him. He's uh, riding a tremendous race today. As we look through here, here is Rodriguez with uh, two of Alberto Contador's teammates for company sitting on the back wearing number 73 is Landa. What a day we're having in the Vuelta a España. And these two Saxa Bank Tinkoff riders will do nothing except tell their team leader up the road what is going on. Well, Valverde now got he met his other teammate in Chelsea and uh, is getting led by him. So uh, with eight kilometers to go, five miles, Contador in control of this race. He'll know the information, he'll know that uh, Valverde is close, and I don't think he's worried about him, but uh, this will slowly cross because he's had Quintana to help him, now he's got Chelsea to help him, Contador's been on his own, but Rodriguez is the major factor here, and he's keeping him at two and a half minutes. Two minutes, 33 seconds is the advantage of Alberto Contador on Perito Rodriguez in the red jersey. Valverde is 1 minute and 27 seconds down now on Alberto Contador. He is closing with every single pedal stroke that him and his teammate in Chausty are putting in. Look at the speed of these riders. It is absolutely full gas on this stage as Rodriguez reaches 9 kilometres to go. He's shown the time gap, sits up, puts his hands on the... Uh, tops of the brake hoods and just rocks a little bit to try and uh, keep the momentum going forward. He lost the Giro d'Italia on the penultimate day. Now he looks like he's losing the Vuelta a España on a day that should for him have been a formality. Well for Contador he really wants that red jersey of the, the leader of the Vuelta. He's been wanting it for a few days now. He's been attacking, attacking and attacking and for Rodriguez the, in the back of his mind now he, he knows he's losing time, he just has to ride his own race, ride his own tempo up this uh, climb and hope that he, he'll recover and they uh, go better because don't put it past Rodriguez, he could come out and win the uh, penultimate stage and probably put time into his, uh, his rivals of uh, Valverde and, and Contador but at this moment this man is riding down Contador. I don't think he's going to catch him at 1 minute and 19 seconds. He has got the help of Inchalste. So two against one, the gap is obviously always going to come down. But uh, he wants that second spot in the podium because he knows that uh, Rodriguez, if he finishes 1 minute and 20, he needs 
Valverde needs a minute and a half, or two, sorry, two minutes and four seconds on, uh, so he's pushing hard to get that second spot. Yeah, Valverde only really needs another 50 odd seconds and he will take second place as we look here at Rodriguez who is now hitting eight kilometers to go. He looks like he's getting a little bit renewed speed and motivation. The penultimate day of this year's Vuelta a España takes us to Bola del Mundo. It's a day back in the mountains that takes us to 2,247 metres above sea level. Contador said that he wanted that stage, he wanted it to be terrible weather and he thought he could take the leadership. But right now he is looking to take the red jersey at the top of this mountain. In Chausti and Valverde with Giannison and Geniet are the riders who are in that group. Just actually getting confirmation, it's going to hold in there one minute and 20 seconds back to Valverde from Contador and two minutes and 40 back to uh, this man here in the red jersey, Rodriguez. Rodriguez has got no allies in this group at all and he has no allies in front of him on the road either because uh, now Giannison cracks the uh, rider from FD Jure, Big Matt cannot stay with the acceleration of Alejandro Valverde in the green jersey who is going for time, he's out the saddle all the time here sprinting his way up every single little rise there's another group in front of him, he wants to make contact with that as well Contador, the winner of the Vuelta previously. Valverde, also a previous winner. The gap drops to 1 minute and 10 seconds between Valverde and Contador. He is closing all the time. The sun on his back, just over 20 degrees centigrade on the terrain that Alberto Contador loves, where the road rises, that little dancing style that only he has. Carrying him forward to a possible leadership of the Vuelta a España as Valverde catches the group of Sergio Hanau of Team Sky. More riders who will ride with Valverde now and see if they can go forward thinking about a stage win. Just looking to see as they click through the gears in this group as they accelerate now to try and stay with them. Yeah, these uh, time checks are constant at the moment. One minute and six seconds, uh, race radio full of time checks from Contador to Valverde. And that information will be getting to the to Valverde, but you can just see he's out the saddle. He's trying hard. He's used Quintana. He's using uh, in Chalste at the moment. They're just mopping up these groups. Still consistent, two minutes and 40 seconds. Back from this man here in the white Contador to the race leader, Rodriguez. It is safe to say, Brian, that normally on a day like today, race radio is relatively quiet. You get the odd time check. You've normally got a breakaway group up the road. Things are fairly steady until the final few kilometres, then it goes mad. Today, the race radio, radio tour in our ears is going crazy all the time. Time check after time check as they try to relay information about the advance of Alberto Contador into these mountains. Four hours, 18 minutes of cracking racing, but the penultimate climb has damaged this rider, Rodriguez. He's a popular bike rider, second in the Giro d'Italia, but stage 17 of the Vuelta a España is a day he'd rather forget. Two minutes and 48 seconds, the advantage from Contador to Rodriguez. Three kilometers to go for Alberto Contador. Contador advancing towards the red jersey. He has three kilometers of pain to go. Out of the saddle, almost touching that photographer as he races past him. Such is the effort. He's just trying to go the fastest line to the finish at Fuente Day. Behind him is Alejandro Valverde, who can almost see Alberto Contador in front of him. Valverde now sees the three kilometre to go banner. He's in a massive gear out of the saddle. And the gap is now going to be around about 30 seconds. 
Valverde hits the three kilometres to go point dead on 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds now, but he's down to himself now. He's just used up in Chalstey. He just got him to ride as hard as he can. And the red jersey one kilometre to, behind, so... Uh, Rich, just getting confirmation it's 245 actually down at that checkpoint to uh, Rodriguez so uh, Contador 30 seconds up in, up in Valverde but it's Contador got enough in these 30 seconds now that Valverde is on his, on his own with uh, what remains of the breakaway behind him the next three kilometres will be completely telling the gap between Valverde and Rodriguez two minutes and four seconds before the start of this incredible stage 17 of the Vuelta a España. The difference between Rodriguez and Alberto Contador was 28 seconds. It looks like Valverde is taking enough time now to move into second place. Contador will not want to be caught on this climb for a number of reasons. He'll just want to concentrate on the job in hand and he'll want to go all the way to the finish to take the stage, but he'll also not want to be disrupted by getting caught by the man in the green jersey that might crack him. Yeah, this is ending up going to be an amazing finish here. Uh, just when we thought uh, Contador well, had enough, and uh, they pulled uh, Bjorn Reese out the team car there, so this gap coming right down, which, uh, again, Valverde shown how strong he, he is, and he, he won a stage of the Tour de France, in the last week, showing how strong he is over the uh, the three-week race. And again, this gap coming down more and more. 21 seconds, 20 seconds, a bit between his teeth at the moment. Valverde wants the stage. He wants to move into his second overall. He wants to put as much time as he can into this man here, Rodriguez. He flicks the elbow. He's on his limit at the moment. Will Henao, Verdugo and Nocentini help him? That's the question. As this, from two kilometres on, starts to get steeper and steeper all the way to the finish. Two kilometres to go for Alberto Contador, who is a slender now. 15 seconds ahead of Alejandro Valverde in the green jersey. But he is now two minutes and 42 seconds ahead of Rodriguez. Look at this now. Valverde is cruising his way up this climb. 15 seconds. He now is right on his wheel. He senses a possible stage for Team Sky. Yeah, Valverde does look strong, but uh, back up to the white jersey of uh, Contador. He's still got a bit of energy left in the legs, and uh, Valverde starting to feel it. You've got uh, Henao, uh, Verdugo and uh, Nocentini behind Valverde, not willing to help, actually struggling to hold the wheel when Valverde injects a bit of pace, and Valverde is right on his limit, 15, 16 seconds, doesn't take the bottle, and uh, back to the front, and Contador, the bit between his... Uh, He's uh, teeth again, 1.4 kilometres to go, and you can just see Contador just injecting a wee bit more pace at the front. Alberto Contador accelerating now. He is gritting his teeth. As Valverde can see now the white jersey in front of him, looking to bring him back if he possibly can. Hernau now attacks Valverde. So Sergio Hernau is trying to go for the stage win for Team Sky. He's been sitting there, he's 18 minutes and 15 seconds down, he's been given free reign by Team Sky today to try and bring home a victory. Contador working that bike as much as he possibly can, keeping the momentum going, he looks ahead of him, he can see the banner across the road. This is going to be an incredible final kilometre. Alberto Contador has one kilometre to go as he chases the red jersey. By the looks of things, uh, Valverde in the, the green just going to come up a kilometre short, 14 seconds. Uh, Contador, the bit between his teeth now, he wants this stage win. He knows he's got the red jersey in the bag at the moment, but uh, he really wants this stage win. He wants to raise his hands up and win the first, uh, first stage back after he's banned. So he's got that bit between his teeth and really wants to do it back to uh, the red jersey of Rodriguez still doing a, a good job here just trying to limit his losses today Rodriguez, we don't know if he made a mistake, we think uh, he just could not go with the attack of Alberto Contador it was a slender few seconds, it grew on the descent and then as the road started to rise up, the gap grew further and further now it is about time as Contador works the bike 
keeps the cadence as high as he possibly can. He has 500 metres in this hurt locker to go. Then he can sit up, he can take the victory. Valverde doesn't want him to have it. Now we're inside the final 500 metres. Alberto Contador in the white jersey of the leader of the combination. But this man today has totally ignited the Vuelta a España. He's found a new chapter in the tactic book that Rodriguez didn't have. He's put the man in the red jersey firmly on the ropes and he has left everyone trailing across the climbs on today's stage. Stage 17 of the Vuelta a España. Alberto Contador, a wall of sound now as he races up the finishing straight. He has 75 metres to go. This man has ridden an incredible time trial across the mountains. Alberto Contador wins stage 17 of the Vuelta a España. He's absolutely ecstatic. He will also tonight pull on the red jersey as the winner of today's stage and the leader of the Vuelta a España. What a day on the climbs of the Vuelta. We wait now for Rodriguez. We've already seen 28 seconds go by. That means that already Contador is the leader of the Vuelta a España. It is now about how much time he will have over Rodriguez. And here he is. Three stage wins. This man is in total pain and agony. He hasn't had a good day on the ride to Fuente Day. For the first time, we see Rodriguez fallible in pain and feeling it. 200 metres to go. He looks like now he has lost second place to Alejandro Valverde. Rodriguez has been a magnificent champion so far in this race. But the rest day was his undoing and the Saxo Bank Tinkoff celebrate the downfall of Rodriguez. And the likely coronation of Alberto Contador. There's the stage result. Contador from Valverde by six seconds on the line with Sergio Enao third. And no disrespect to the other finishers on the first page, but the only other time that really mattered was that of Joaquin Rodriguez. He was 10th, losing 2 minutes 38, and the race lead along with it. His teammate Danny Moreno was in a group at 4 minutes 48 with Andrew Talansky and Chris Froome another 10 seconds behind them. The first order of post-race protocol was the stage winner's presentation. Alberto Contador's first since his return from suspension. Then the pent-up emotion from his suspension came pouring out as he was asked to describe the stage and most likely Vuelta winning attack. Pues sí, la verdad que muchas gracias, la verdad que que sí me la he me la he jugado. Yo creo que mucha gente diría, diría que donde que donde voy estando tan lejos, ¿no? Pero yo sabía que había que intentarlo, no estoy en mi mejor momento. Pero tenía muchísimas ganas, al final hacer segundo está bien, pero lo que hay que intentar siempre es ganar. Y bueno, yo creo que hemos dado un paso importante. Quiero dedicar esta victoria a toda la gente que ha estado ahí todo este tiempo, a mi familia, a mi mujer, a mis amigos y bueno, a todos los aficionados que, que nos están acompañando en la vuelta. Has ganado muchas cosas, has tenido muchos días felices. Entre tus días felices, ¿hace podio este? Sí, la verdad que sí. Este día ha sido, ha sido realmente importante. La verdad que poca gente ha apostado ya por mí para, para la victoria en la general. Por supuesto que todavía no se ha conseguido la victoria, pero se ha dado un paso importante. Y bueno, yo creo que hay otra cosa que hay que celebrar este año. Creo que la Vuelta a España está siendo una carrera impresionante. Yo creo que esta Vuelta a España está volviendo otra vez al nivel que tenía antaño. Y bueno, creo que eso es para celebrarlo. So here's what today's stage has done to the standings. Alberto Contador now leads the Vuelta by a minute 52. Not from the Manny Trail this morning, but from Alejandro Valverde. Joaquin Rodriguez is down to third at 2 minutes 28. Chris Froome stays fourth, but he's now 9 minutes 40 behind. Now he still has a couple of jerseys by way of consolation. Joaquin Rodriguez, the Green of Points leader, and the white combined jersey for all the consolation there'll be. But the question remains as to how he lost the red one. And since we didn't see it, we had to ask. Incluso yo estaba un poquito más adelante que él, 
eh, ha arrancado él por el lado izquierdo. Sí que es verdad que tarda un poco en reaccionar a por él. Pero bueno, I was just ahead of Alberto. He attacked on my left. It's fair to say I was slow to react. Now I think I should have gone after him with everything I had. But it happens. You can't think. Bueno, pues ha sido un poco kamikaze, la verdad. Mira, hemos subido el primero, creo que era Ozalba. He visto esa tensa mucho, la gente iba más o menos justa y bueno, luego íbamos al collado de Oz. Iba realmente todo el pelotón, pero se había un grupo con, con tres corredores míos por delante y, y únicamente he dicho por la radio a los de delante que full gas, porque yo iba a atacar por atrás, no quería decir nada más, porque muchas veces las radios las tenemos pinchados unos equipos con otros y, y he salido convencido, al igual que en Alpeduén en el año 2011. Well, he's a controversial figure to many people, Alberto Contador, but you can't fault his commitment to attacking. And perhaps the most audacious attack of his career has put him in the race lead. So, Mamo to the Spanish state broadcaster, when Alberto Contador talks about finding a stage where he can attack on the penultimate climb of the day, you might want to make sure that you're on air for the penultimate climb of the day. Anyway, never mind. And Roger, they weren't the only ones caught out today. Having agreed at the top of the show that the one thing Joaquin Rodriguez wouldn't do was let his guard down, that's exactly what he did do. Yeah, that's it, Gary. Finally, he's let us down. He's ridden a perfect race until now. You know, tactically, he's ridden amazingly. He's gone for all of the bonus seconds. and we, 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 He was so predictable almost. And now finally, on the day where you thought all was going to run to plan, he's, he's just lost the race completely. He's paid very, very dearly for one mistake, and I'm pretty sure what he's done is looked at the race book. Written today off as not a very hard stage, a day that should have been run of the mill. He should have been able to just follow Contador to the finish. Then the next two days, he's got two flat stages where he could have really recovered well, ready for the penultimate massive stage. Um, just an oversight it should never happen. And why did he have so few teammates around him? All right, perhaps he wasn't sharp. We heard that he didn't go out and ride his bike yesterday. He stayed in bed um, rather unusually. But um, he had so little support. Yeah, this was a bit unusual, but we have seen over the last few days that towards the end of the stages, especially in the mountains, he's, he's been near enough alone. He has had Moreno with him a little while towards the end, but he's, it's been noticeably absent from the rest of his team. I mean, today he did have Losada left, but... There was an attack early on from Valverde and Contador today and I think he used a lot of his team just to close that gap and it just left him with one teammate and that was just far too little and far too late. So uh, how much do we blame Rodriguez and how much do we give credit to uh, Alberto Contador? Well, yeah, I mean, Alberto Contador rode the race of his life today. I mean, I'm pretty sure half of the reason he was able to stay away in the end was because he was going that fast. I mean, there's quite a lot of times where you just think, Oof, I'm just going to let him go because he's just going way too early, way too fast, expecting him to blow up and, and come back on his own later on in the stage. But he just went away and, and just look at the gaps he put into everybody today. So I think there's a lot of Alberto Contador was going very fast. But make no bones about it, Rodriguez had one job to do today, and that was to follow Contador, and he didn't do it. And Roger, when you're watching a race as exciting and dramatic as this, the last thing you really want to do is step back and start questioning the whole thing, especially when so much of uh, today's was perhaps tactical as much as it was physical. But here you've got two riders coming back from doping bands, riding away from the one rider in contention who isn't. So there are going to be people at home who are applauding at less than full volume at the sight of that, no matter how much panache it's done with. That's true. And, and you know, the, the one thing that I think about on the whole subject is that, you know, it's especially with Contador, you know, just the way that the ban was done, how, he, how his ban was carried out. You know, it wasn't the full two-year ban and, and away from the sport and then come back. So I think there's a little bit of a sick feeling with the fans on, on that side of the coin. But that's how it is, Gary. We don't make the rules. If, the, if we did the rules, maybe it would have been run differently. So we have to accept the powers that be and what they say. So, you know, on the same way as there is that sick, sick feeling inside, we have to applaud him for what he's achieved today and, and just take it as his face value. And on face value, it is an incredible race. And the way the race is going, I hesitate to say that the general classification won't change tomorrow. But according to the profile, at least it shouldn't. 186 kilometers tomorrow from Aguilar de Campo to Valladolid and barely 150 meters variation in altitude all day. This is the Vuelta's flattest road stage, so expect a battle between a breakaway filled with riders from teams who have yet to win a stage and the sprinters teams, none of whom of course have won a stage except Argos Shimano's John Dagenkolb. 7 o'clock tomorrow for highlights of stage 18 and that's the same all the way through to Madrid on Sunday.
Well, Alberto Contador outwitted everybody today, including the Spanish state broadcaster who managed not to be on air for what looks like being the pivotal moment of the entire race. That is, of course, unless it pivots again. Still four days to go, and we'll see you back here for Stage 17 tomorrow.